Hello, I'm Antonio Mora. This is the News and News.com Day in Brief on Monday, February 4th at about 5.30 p.m. Virginia Governor Ralph Northam met with members of his cabinet today, reportedly telling them he does not want to leave office as, quote, a racist for life. So far, he's refusing to quit in the face of unrelenting and almost unanimous pressure. We don't yet have all the facts, but the picture on his medical school yearbook page of a man in blackface and another in a KKK outfit was atrocious and unexplainable. He was 25 and should have known better. The few voices raised to say Northam should stay in office argue that his record shows he's a strong advocate for African Americans. This is another reminder that what we, we as a society are willing to forgive is changing, and apologies aren't enough. Just nine years ago, Senator Robert Byrd was still the president pro tempore of the Senate. Even though he hadn't just worn a costume as a younger man, he had been an active member of the Klan. Virginia's Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax, the man who would take over if Northam resigns, is also in the middle of his own firestorm. A woman who is a fellow at Stanford University and a professor at Scripps College is reportedly accusing him of sexual assault during the 2004 Democratic Convention. Fairfax, Fairfax is forcefully denying it, saying he will take appropriate legal action and that the Washington Post investigated the allegation and did not find evidence to support the story. The drama over whether the State of the Union address would take place at all will end Tuesday night when President Trump steps up to the dais in the House of Representatives. It's likely other drama will then follow. Trump, as he often does, has been teasing big announcements for days. He's expected to formally announce details of his next summit with Kim Jong-un and to continue his harsh rhetoric on immigration. He's also implied he might announce the declaration of a national emergency in order to move ahead and build a border wall. I have no doubt that even the laziest American president still works very hard, on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. However, most Americans would probably be very envious, envious of Trump's workday if a leak of White House schedules for the past couple of months is accurate. It shows 60% of Trump's 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. hours were unstructured, something the White House refers to as executive time. That doesn't even include lunch. Trump's schedule is drastically different than those of his predecessors, but his personal secretary came to his defense arguing he's, quote, working harder for the American people than anyone in recent history. Russia initially responded with some saber rattling after the U.S. announced it was withdrawing from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty because of repeated Russian violations. The Russians first said they'd withdraw as well, raising concerns about a new arms race. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov tried to smooth things over a bit, arguing that we should not be talking about a new Cold War. Even so, he then blamed the U.S. for destroying the entire arms control system. EU countries have recognized opposition leader Juan Guaido as interim president of Venezuela after the country's dictator Nicolás Maduro refused to call for elections. The Russians, of course, accused the EU of meddling in Venezuela and continue to support Maduro, despite the ongoing deprivation and human rights violations. It's long past time for the Russians to stop playing geopolitical games and help stop the suffering in Venezuela. Following Fidel Castro's playbook, Maduro threatened to plunge Venezuela into civil war if the U.S. sends troops, warning the U.S. presidency would be, quote, stained with blood if, US, uh, if Trump intervenes. U.S. sanctions are pushing the country's already crumbling oil industry even closer to collapse. Without access to hard currency, Maduro will have a rough time holding on to power as he faces mass protests. The U.S. and South Korea have reached a preliminary deal on how to pay for the nearly 30,000 U.S. troops stationed there. Under the revised Special Measures Agreement, South Korea would contribute about a billion dollars. That's an increase of about 200 million, significantly less than the 1.6 billion initially requested by Trump. Another widespread storm will bring snow and ice from the west to the plains, midwest, and interior northeast this week. The upper midwest will again see sub-zero temperatures. Has any new member of the House of Representatives come close to getting the attention paid to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez? I doubt any other freshman has been chatting on the phone with the leader of the opposition in the UK. Labor Party Chief Jeremy Corbyn tweeted about his conversation with the representative from the Bronx and celebrated how she's challenging the status quo. He called for a cross-border movement to, quote, take on the billionaires, polluters, and migrant baiters. Critics say Ocasio-Cortez is treading on thin ice because of Corbyn's history of anti-Semitism and her own positions on Israel. 
In our daily alternate universe segment, The Great Divide Between Conservative and Liberal Media, bias isn't just an issue in reporting, it's also a problem in polls, which is one reason we tend to pay little attention to them at News & News. I'll make an exception today to prove my point. A new CNN poll shows both Trump and Speaker Pelosi had significant bumps in favorability after the government shutdown. That means a very unpopular shutdown made them both more popular. It can't just be that their respective bases suddenly like them a lot more, so either the poll is wrong or the American people are nuts. I'd bet on the former. Finally, all those New England Patriots haters out there won't like it, but Tom Brady's team cemented its claim to being the greatest dynasty in football history with a 13-3 Super Bowl victory over the LA Rams. It didn't matter that the game was a snore unless you love defensive battles. The Patriots defense dominated with one of the greatest performances in Super Bowl history. We have all those stories and much more updated around the clock seven days a week at newsatnews.com where you will find all you need to know in one place. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the right of your screen just below this video. Please follow us on Twitter at, at follow me on Twitter at AmoraTV and follow us on Facebook at Real News and News. I'll see you again tomorrow.